Well, hi to everybody. The excitement's building. Christmas is coming very quickly now. And we've reached our final person of Christmas. We've reached the baby in the manger. So I've got a question to start this week. Who is this baby lying in the manger? Well, what we know is that the prophets of old had predicted his birth, his coming for hundreds, even thousands of years. We know that they predicted he would be born in Bethlehem and that he would be a shepherd for his people Israel. We know that on earth at that time, Caesar Augustus had issued a decree and had said that all the world should be taxed and everyone must return to where they came from. So Mary and Joseph amazingly headed for Bethlehem right to the place. Do you remember our map where the Bible had predicted that this Messiah would be born? And so he's born and he's wrapped in swaddling cloths and he's laid in a manger. And as this happens, we read in the Bible that the sky was filled with thousands and thousands of angels, myriads of angels, singing and worshipping God because they knew, they knew how extraordinary this was. And out on the hills of Bethlehem, we know that those shepherds heard those angels that night and they were told to run down to the, to the town and to find the stable and they came and they found it just as the angels had said and they looked in wonder at this baby lying in a manger. And out in the east, we know as well that the kings had seen a star and this had made such an impression on them that they had travelled hundreds of miles for weeks to come across the desert towards Israel. They said, we've seen his star in the east. It's rising in the east and we've come to worship him. And when they saw him, we know that they fell down before that baby and they worshipped him. So who is this baby lying in the manger? You know his name and I know his name. But how much do we really know of Jesus, our magnificent final person of Christmas? Remember what Monica taught us that God who had made the far reaches of space, he himself in some way was lying there in that manger. Balaam and the prophets had caught a sight of this centuries before his birth and Zechariah, Elizabeth and Mary, they were beginning to prophesy extraordinary things about him. They weren't just saying this baby will come, but that they were saying extraordinary things both about him and about what he would do. So who is this baby lying in the manger? He wasn't just the son of God, was he, and the son of man who walked upon the earth for 33 years. No, he was more than that. He had existed before all things and through him and for him, the very worlds were created. Listen to what the Bible says about him. He is the, he is the visible likeness of the invisible God. He is the firstborn son created superior to all other things. For through him, through Jesus, God created everything in heaven and on earth, the seen and the unseen, spiritual powers, lords, rulers, authority. God created the whole world through him, through Jesus, and for him, for Jesus. He existed before all things. This is the baby lying in the manger. Oh Lord, I sometimes pray this. Let me too see a sight of Jesus. Let me see what the angels saw, what the shepherds and the kings and the prophets saw. And ever since that time, people have seen glimpses, caught glimpses of Jesus. And there's a man called Philip Brooks, and he's a man who lived about 150 years ago, and he too caught a sight of Jesus. And in 1865, he went to Israel. This is about 150 years ago. He's a Victorian man. And he rode on Christmas Eve, imagine this, from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. It's about six miles on horseback. And there he took part in a service remembering the birth of Jesus. How exciting that must have been. Bethlehem then was still a very ancient town. It wasn't all built up like it is nowadays. And three years later, this man, Phillips Brooks, was back home and he was preparing for Christmas in his church and he wanted to write something for the children to sing. And he sat there and he remembered how he'd been on those hills in Bethlehem and how he'd looked down at the town below. And so with much feeling that night, he wrote down these famous lines. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. 
he caught a glimpse of Jesus, this man, and he, Jesus was in him like a shining, burning light in his own heart. And so he wrote, Yet in your dark street shineth the everlasting light. He was thinking of Jesus. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. See, the world was largely unaware. That's what he meant. It was silent. People didn't know what was happening. As God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. See, I'm convinced that the human heart is made for heavenly things, that it can find no other satisfaction apart from in heavenly things. But until Jesus Christ came, heavenly things couldn't fill human hearts because those hearts were too unclean. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above, while mortals sleep the angels keep their watch of wandering love. See, the world was sleeping then, and in many ways the world is sleeping now, unaware of what God is doing. O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to men on earth. So those heavenly beings and creatures in heaven, they're not sleeping. It says that day and night they're crying out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And then he wrote, No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. What is a meek soul? It's someone who doesn't think they know it all. It's somebody who's not sure and they're saying, God, I want to know more about this. That's a meek soul. Our souls need to be meek instead of proud. And then it says, the dear Christ. The dear Christ. See, I think we have no idea how dear Christ is. You know, the early Pentecostals last century, they used to sing a song and it said this. Since my eyes have looked on Jesus, I've lost sight of all beside. So enchained my spirit's vision, gazing on the crucified. Phillips Brooks, too, also realised that this Christ was a dear Christ. How dear is he to my heart? How dear is he in my life? And then look at this prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. What a prayer. What a prayer for us to pray this Christmas. Descend in a new way, Jesus, into my heart. And then he finishes with this. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O oh, come to us, abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel, our Lord, this baby lying in the manger, Lord of heaven and earth. We've yet to understand this, Lord of heaven and earth, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. He wants to come and to be with us. What a name, Emmanuel. He wants to come into our muddle. He wants to come into the stable. He wants to come into all of our fragile existence and he wants to come and be with us. Wow. Let's pray. Oh God, we worship you today for this baby in the manger. Father, we know now that he's more than the baby in the manger. He is our Lord, Lord of heaven and earth. He is Emmanuel. Lord, we pray the prayer of this carol. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Father, in a new way, visit our hearts at this time. Amen. Amen.